worthy of all that praise you. Help me sing. You give life to our love. Hey, you bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore. You restore every heart that is broken. You can lie. You can lie. You are love. You are love. Perfect in 
Before we move on to the next song, the Lord gave me a verse in, the, in my heart that I just wanted to say to you before I uh, go to the next song. So let's turn our attention to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 17. Now before we read this verse, I'd like to give a small context why and why this happened. So King Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah and Jerusalem. And he received a word from his prophet saying that three armies were going to battle against him. And these three armies were bigger, stronger, and larger than all of Judah's people. And naturally, there was a state of panic and stress in the king's mind and in the pe people's minds. But then the king uh, assembled the people together like we do now and organized a fasting. And during that fasting, the Spirit of the Lord came upon on the prophets and told them this. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. And the next scene is like one of the classic scenes in the Bible. And king, the king Jehoshaphat could have arranged his army however he wanted. But then he put his musicians and singers at the front line. And appointed them to sing. In verse 21 we read, Give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever. Hallelujah. You know, if you make your praise your melody, heaven will come yes, down to yes, fight for you. Yes, yes, yes. Do you believe that this morning? Yes, this night, yes, yes. if you make your praise your melody, the heaven will come down to fight for you. And that is what happened to the people of Jeris Hallelujah. Judah and Jerusalem. They came out ready for war, but the Lord had already done His thing. He set a trap, and they were ambushed, and they were routed. So this night, the Spirit of the Lord is saying to all of you, the enemy might have some things which belong to you, but all you have to do is raise a hallelujah. If you make your praise your melody, heaven will come down to fight for you. So are you ready to sing? Are you ready to raise a hallelujah? I'll raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemy Yeah, yeah I'll raise a hallelujah Raise a hallelujah. My weapon is. 
up offering to the Lord. He's an able God. He's a powerful God. He's a miracle worker. He's a prayer answering and a prayer hearing God. Begin to pray in the spirit. Raise your hands and voices. Begin to pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Shut up, da 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 da. Come on, pray in the spirit. Louder, 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 louder. Let there be prayer. 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 Oh, begin to bubble. Be begin to bubble. Even on the inside, begin to bubble. Oh. Now I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder Louder Your presence is felt and understood. We receive you. Your presence is felt and known. Your presence is felt and known. Thank you for being here. You're welcome in this place. Welcome in this place. 
Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Breathe on us this night. Breathe on us this night. Breathe on us, Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, breathe on us. We are ready. We are hungry. We are thirsty. And we have gathered. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Would you help me and welcome the Holy Spirit in this place? Would you give him, give him a bigger welcome? Would you please do it? Would you give him a bigger welcome? Would you stand up on your feet if you're seated? We all join together and give him a big welcome. A big welcome. Big welcome. A big welcome. A big welcome. A big welcome. You can do better than that. 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 A big welcome. One more time, give him a big welcome. One more time. One more time, give him a big welcome. Just one more time, with all your strength, give him a big welcome. Give him, give him. Oh. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Raise it higher, give him a big welcome, people! Turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you all right? All right. All right. Are you all right? 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 What do you expect after this big praise? What do you expect? Expect after this worship, after this praise. I am more than all right. I am more than all right. I, I am more. I am more. I am more. Everyone say we are deep. Please don't sit down. At IBC, we wait for instructions. You do not sit down before I tell you to sit. I'm hosting this meeting. Praise God. I love you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. We are going deeper. We are going deeper. We are going deeper. We are going deeper. God has blessed us so much. We are so humbled. I, I am so humbled that all of you came. And you decided to be here these days. For me, this is ministry to my heart. This is ministry to my heart. 
Um, I want to appreciate all the servants of God for turning up, for coming and doing everything that you have done to make sure that we all gather here and we summon the presence of the King. I'm humbled. I honor you so much, so, so much. And uh, I want to commit myself to serving you. I want to serve you. I want to commit myself to serve you. Those of you that traveled from the UK and other places, I want to serve you. I'm so humbled. I'm so honored that you're here. It's such a blessing. It is ministry to my heart. Um, the, the, the men and women of God that God has sent to us, my mother, Dr. Pat, I'm so humbled. Knowing, knowing, knowing your schedules, you, you know, we just finished a conference in Canada. Uh, as soon as we closed, you went on the airport. You went at the airport and on the plane to Uganda, ministered for a week, went back to Canada, preached Sunday service, came to Sweden. I mean, that's ministry to me. That's ministry. That's ministry. That's ministry. That's ministry to my heart. And Pastor Lincoln, Pastor Grace, you know. Um, Dr. David is a very busy man, overseeing so many churches. I called him late. Uh, you, you didn't see him on the flyer, so he, you know, I called him late. I think I called him um, two days ago. And he went on the next flight. What a man of God. I don't just call people men of God. I know who a man of God is. I know who a man of God is. So he told me, uh, give me two hours. I'll get back to you. And uh, he got back to me. And he said, I am coming. <laughs> and he said, I am coming. I'll come on Friday so I can receive from other speakers before I preach. And knowing his schedule, his life, that's ministry to my heart. And uh, I've been honored. Um, you know, he has invited me in different places uh, to minister. And uh, I have seen how God uses him. And yet, he's so humble. And he's a servant. He's a man of God. So I'm so honored that he's here today. I'm going to ask um, my announcer to give us some uh, background so we know uh, the, the man of God God has sent to us today. Please stay standing. Pastor David Sola Oludoye is a qualified medical doctor who is now in full-time ministry. He is a special assistant to the general overseer, the regional pastor in charge of the Redeemed Christian Church of God Europe Mainland Region 3, overseeing 19 nations and the senior pastor of Royal Connections, London, UK. He is a dynamic. is also the author of many life-changing books, including The Prayer Smith, 
mastering the act of prayer, the seven principles of success, and many more. He is happily married to his darling wife, Pastor Dr. Grace, and they are blessed with three lovely children. Pastor David Sol. Come on, welcome Dr. David Sol. Amen. Let's lift our hands to heaven for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. You're everything to us. Lord, besides you, nothing else matters. Outside of you, nothing has significance. Jesus, we enthrone you in this place. We proclaim you as king. Standing here in the midst of us, we lift you high with our praise. Thank you. Thank you for Thursday night. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for today. Lord, thank you for the sweet aroma and incense of worship. Lord, thank you for this awesome worship team, oh God. Thank you for fresh oil upon their lives. Father, thank you for this atmosphere. We, we just wave our hands to you, Jesus. We just wave them to you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all of the revelations we have heard. Thank you for all of the teachings we have received. Thank you, Lord, for our host, pastor, and the team behind this awesome conference. Father, we give you the praise for their lives. We, we adore you. We magnify you. We exalt you. Your name is Yahweh. El Shaddai is your name. The all-breasted God. We praise you, oh God. The one that has answer to every question. Solution to every problem. We, we bless your name. The one that calls those things that be not as though they are. We bless your name. You are the way maker, oh God. You are the lifter up of our head. We bless your name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you because you're working on us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. We give you praise. Thank you. Lord, we just submit ourselves to you tonight. That Lord, in the life of every man, woman, boy, or girl who has come to IBC this year at Jehovah, let there be total, complete, overall and transformation, O God. That each of us becomes the picture you have of us in heaven. Father, thank you. We give you glory and praise. Psalms chapter 47 verse 1 says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Come on. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your name. Be before I let you sit down, we just obeyed Psalm 47 verse 1. But we do do something else. Let's add something else to it. The Bible says clap your hands, shout. But can we add something else? Can we jump also? So clap your hands, oh ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of fire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. Come on, come on, hallelujah, yes, yes, hallelujah. You may kindly be seated, God bless you. Thank you guys, thank you. Please, we do celebrate and honor the worship team, let's clap for them. Wonderful guys, God bless you. Ah. Uh, it's such an honor and a privilege to stand before you tonight. And pastorate in this house uh, for the invitation extended to me so graciously. I'm truly grateful. In particular, because when uh, I got the wind about the conference and I got the letter from pastor, my intention was 
I wanted to come and just hear Dr. Pat Francis speak and uh, just to drink from the well of our death. And it's been awesome. Would you please help me appreciate and honor her, man? God bless you, man. Let's, let's celebrate her. Thank you for making time to come here. He's, uh, you know, when you see people from afar on television in different places and they come to Stockholm, you got to be here. Otherwise, I don't know, you might have to line up somewhere else and be on the queue to be able to see her. She's here live and direct, so we thank God for her life, man. Amen? And also, when I, when I heard Pastor Sarah speak yesterday, you know what I said? I said, oh my God, help me. Because I don't know what to say again. Pastor Sarah, man, you got something in you, man. Let's celebrate her. Let's honor her. Thank God for your life. Pastor Grace, rather. Pastor Grace, God bless you. And thank God for Pastor Lincoln. I've known him in England. And his teachings have been very deep. May the Lord strengthen you the more in Jesus' name. And finally, let's honor Pastor Wilberforce and his wife. Let's thank God for them. Go ahead and do just that. Amen. Let's open our Bibles, if we can, to Psalms chapter 57. Psalms chapter 57. I'm trying to see if you understand the way I speak. You may wonder why my language has been mixed up for many years. I left Nigeria speaking English, and I spent eight and a half years in Russia speaking Russian. So I speak Russian, I write Russian, I pronounce Russian, I also speak some French. Before now going back to England, so everything is mixed up somewhere, amen? But the intention is to bring out God's glory, hallelujah. So if you help me speak something in Russian, just say Jesus is Lord, amen. Psalms chapter 57, verse 7 to 11. The Bible says, my heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. And I will sing and give praise. Verse 8, I wake up my glory. I wake sultry and up. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. Verse 10, for thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Verse 11 says, be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, let thy glory be above all the earth. Amen? Another scripture we shall read together is Psalms chapter 108. Psalms chapter 108, verse 1 and 2. Psalms 108, verse 1 and 2, King James Version of the Bible. It says, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Whose glory is going to give praise to God tonight? He said, even with my glory, I will give praise to you. Then he now says, awake, sultry and up. I myself will awake early. I'm, I'm going to try and just speak for a brief moment of the time I have and uh, try to look at this scripture and explain what I feel is on my heart to us as much as possible. As I preach to myself, also preaching to you about let my glory awake. Let my glory awake. Amen? Would you help me look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, let my glory awake. No, you're not saying it convincingly. Look at somebody eyeball to eyeball. Say, let my glory awake. Now, put your hand on your chest and shout, let my glory awake. Now, it's a declaration you have just made. It's also a prayer. And the Bible says in Numbers chapter 14, verse 28, Numbers 14, 28, as truly as I live, said the Lord, as they have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto them. One more time now, shout it like you will. Say, let my glory awake. Let my glory awake. Amen. Amen. Lord, in the next brief moments, please speak to us. Take these tongues of clay and make it your pen, O God, in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, to wake up, awake, 
The word awake, A-W-A-K-E, simply means to rouse from sleep. To rouse from sleep. In other words, it's possible that people's glory is uh, uh, asleep. So when we say, let my glory awake, we are saying, wake up from slumber. Wake up from sleeping. In Luke chapter 9, verse 32, it said, Luke the gospel, chapter 9, verse 32, the Bible says, but Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory. And the two men that stood with him. I'm believing God in the next 40 minutes. Somebody is going to wake up in this place. And you are going to wake up into glory in the name of Jesus. So it's to wake up from sleep. Wake up from slumber. The word awake also means to rouse to action. To become active. Stop being passive. Stop watching life go by. It's time to get involved and it's time to make a difference. It means to rouse to action. It means to become active. In Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1 and 2, Isaiah 52 verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. It's time for the church to wake up. We have taken a back seat for a long time. We have watched men dominate politics, dominate finances, dominate real estate. But God is challenging us in IBC. It's time to wake up and put on our strength. After all, we are Zion. He said, put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. From henceforth, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Verse 2 says, shake yourself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Lose yourself from the banks of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Somebody shout, let my glory awake. So it means to rouse to action. Let's, in other words, don't just watch things happen. Become the happening yourself. Don't just analyze what is happening. Become the one that is now analyzed. Don't be the one that writes report about others. Become the one that you are now the report itself. Don't be the one telling other people's news. You become the news yourself. Ha. Don't become the one that people are giving arms to. Become the one that is giving arms to others. Don't become that the one that is receiving charity. Become the one that is giving help to other people. Somebody shout, I will awake. It also means, awake means to come or bring to an awareness. To come or bring to an awareness. In other words, become cognizant. Become aware of who you are. Become aware of what you have. Become aware of what you carry. Become aware of what is invested in you. Become aware of what the Lord has placed inside of you. Ladies and gentlemen, the plan of God in IBC 2019 is that you and I become aware of the deposits and capacities and capabilities of God inside of us. Shout, let my glory awake. Now, what is glory? I know a lot of definitions have been said, but just permit me to just go on this line for a few moments. What is glory? Glory simply means the fullness of grace and truth in your life. The fullness of grace and truth in your life. Glory is your colorful destiny, beloved. Glory is your colorful destiny. Glory is the announcement of the, of the positive of God in your life. It's your colorful destiny. Joseph had a glory, a coat of many colors in his life. And through that, people began to announce him. He had a colorful destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, glory is your honor and dignity. Psalms chapter 8 and verse 5. Glory is honor and dignity. 
Glory is honor and dignity. Glory is the beauty of God upon you. Exodus chapter 28 and verse 2. Glory is the beauty of God upon you. And so tonight I make bold to declare on this altar, whatever represents ugliness in your life, as the glory of God awakes, it comes to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? The glory of God is the beauty of God upon your life. The glory of God is the display of the excellence of of God in your life. Whatever makes God excellent. The Bible says great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Whatever makes God praiseful is that which is in your life is the excellence of God. Glory is the original divine deposit in your life. When you were created, when you were made, when God conceived you in your mother's womb, before your father and mother met each other, when everyone decided you needed to come to planet earth there was a deposit inside of you. That is the glory of God. Listen, I'm a doctor by profession, sir. Before you came to this world, when you were conceived in the womb, everything was perfect. It will take conception sometime and delivery that issues happen. And so we call it congenital malformality. But sir, when everyone conceived you, you were made beautiful. Ah, there is a glory deposit in your life. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your original divine deposit. Listen, glory is your unique distinguishing quality. Your unique distinguishing quality that sets you apart from every other human being. That sets you apart. Glory is that which is peculiar to you. Glory is what makes you stand out. And I would have loved to pray for somebody from today. You will stand out and not blend in anymore. Many people in life blend in. They are just a shadow of themselves. They are, there's nothing special about them. But glory is what makes you stand out. Somebody shout, I will stand out. Oh, come on, talk to me. Shout, I will stand out. That is glory. Listen, glory makes you stand out. Glory is peculiar to you. My glory is not your glory. Your glory is not my glory. Each of us carry our own glory. There is a glory of the sun. There is a glory of the moon. There is a glory of the stars. Each of them is meant to shine. Ladies and gentlemen, your glory is peculiar to you. And so my assignment is to precede the speaker of tonight that the glory in you may awake. Awake to its full potential. Awake to its full blossoming. Awake to everything that God has put inside of you. Somebody shout, I will awake. You see, for me, I, I didn't quite get into this because all I knew was stethoscope, you see. And I began to consult people. I will tell you, you are sick in this. You are sick in that. All I could do was prescribe medication for people. I could, I could do surgery for you. But when I came into Jesus and I had an encounter with Jesus Christ, I realized there is something greater, higher, stronger than the medication I give to people. It is called the glory of the Lord. It is called the anointing of the Lord. Tonight, I pray for somebody under this atmosphere. May you locate your glory in Jesus' name. May your glory arise. May your glory awake. Somebody shout glory. glory. Glory of God is what makes you stand out. It is the divine deposit, the presence of God in a person's life. It is God's majesty and magnificence in your life. It is, I call it, the special manifestation of God's power through you and in you. Listen, glory of God on you is the seal of God upon your life. The mark you carry everywhere. It is so you enter into a place. You haven't said anything at all but there is something about you that announces itself. It's called glory. It's called glory. Many people think when we say glory, it means to fall down. It means to be slain. That is there but glory is beyond that. Glory protects you. Glory of God announces you. I say glory of God is the divine aroma, divine perfume upon a person's life. That you walk into a place without saying anything, that glory announces you. I remember when I came into contact with Christ and I began to seek the face of the Lord. I was working one hospital in South London. 
And I was called into the emergency, or what you call ER, emergency ward. And I walked into the place. There was a patient that had come. I needed to be seen. Nurses were attending to her. And I walked into the place to talk to this patient. And the sister who brought the patient said, tell that man to go out. So people looked at them and said, what's she talking about? He said, tell that man, that was me now, to leave this place. I haven't said anything. And they said, why? He said, tell him to stop rebuking us. I didn't say a word. All I came in was with a stethoscope. And she said, tell him to stop rebuking us. Why? There is a glory in your life, beloved. There is an aura, an aroma, a perfume of God that announces you. And you know what happened? She said, tell that man to go out. Of course, they said, we can't tell him to go out. Then she left the place and said, I can't be here anymore. Why? Your glory announces God's presence in your life. Listen, it is God's glory in you that draws favor to you. Somebody shout glory. So to, su to awake, therefore, suggests to us that something has been asleep before. To awake suggests that something has been inactive to awake suggests something has been unused, untapped, untouched. Something has been reservoir, never touched before. But this IBC conference is to make sure that that which is unused can become deployed. Ah, that which is in you can become released. That which God put in you can be released to bless humanity. Somebody shall let my glory awake. Now, ladies and gentlemen, why will glory be asleep? Sometimes it could be because you don't know who you are. There's an identity issue. You see, when you don't know who you are, men will define you. And if they can define you, they can nullify you. And that's what has happened to many of us. We've been defined by our status. We've been defined by our passport. We've been defined by your accent and the way you speak your language. You've been defined by the school you went. But sir, that's not who you are. Glory that is awake may be because you don't know who you are. Identity issue. Identity issue. Moses, you are not a shepherd. You are a deliverer. Your identity. Peter, you are not a fisherman. You are a fisher of men. Your identity. Glory may be asleep when you don't know your worth or your value. You see, your value is not determined by the nation you were born. Your value is not determined by the, con the school you went. Your value is determined by the person who created you and for his intention. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, says, For we have this treasure in earthen vessel, that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. Somebody shout, I'm valuable. Oh, come on, say with gusto. Say, I am valuable. You, you have value. You have, you have value. And it's a strong one. So when people don't know their worth, their glory goes to bed. Glory might be asleep when your circumstances are determining your productivity. This morning we were told, look beyond where you are. In Genesis chapter 13, Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3, God called Abraham. I will do seven things with you. In verse 4, Genesis 12, 4, he left, obeyed God, and Lot went with him. In chapter 13 now, they became very wealthy. And were doing very well. And there was a strife between Lot and the earth men of Abraham. Abraham says, sir, we don't need to quarrel. You choose a place to go, and I will choose another place. Cut a long story short. Mr. Lot took the well watered places and the best of places. Now, Abraham could have thought my circumstances would determine my glory. But God came down and said, listen, son, Genesis chapter 13, 14, 15. He said, lift up your eyes from where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. As far as you can see, will I give to you. In other words, what you have lost does not determine your glory. Your glory is a function of what I've spoken about you, I've determined about you, and where I'm taking you to. Somebody shall let my glory awake. Your circumstances 
must not determine your productivity. Well, why do glory sleep sometimes when you company with the wrong crowd? Many people's glory go to bed. It's not awake. Why? They company with the wrong crowd. The crowd of unbelief. Twelve men were sent. Go spy out the promised land. And the Bible says ten of them came back with bad reports. And because of their bad report, 1.2 odd million people were in the wilderness for 40 years. Why? The wrong crowd. Beloved, if there is a decision you must make from IBC, is that you've got to change your crowd. Change those who are around you. If they are not speaking faith, they are not encouraging you to go in the way of the Lord, change the crowd. Why? You can never be stronger or better than those around you. Either they pull you down or they encourage you. The crowd, if you come with the wrong crowd, listen to me, your glory can go to bed. And then, why do people's glory go to sleep? When all you have had all your life is impossibility. You can't do it. You are not up to it. You are not beautiful enough. People like you don't excel. You can't achieve this. You can't achieve that. Don't you know this is Europe? There are some things you cannot accomplish. The devil is a liar. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. When we started church in London many, many years ago, and I realized that my wife and I were the highest earners in church. We're both medical doctors. And I like people come to church want wealthy. So we began to ask people, Lord, what do we do? The Lord gave us a vision. So sometimes I will take the men, as few as you are, take them. Let's go to Park Lane in the center of the most expensive street in London. Let's go there. Let's book a table in the restaurant and eat. And they'll be afraid. We don't have money. I say it's not about money. It's about your perception. Let's go there. I want to change something in you. And gradually, gradually, we began to change people's perception. Let's book a table at the restaurant. Let's eat good food. Let somebody also serve you. You've been serving others. You sit down, dignify, take fork and knife, eat some good food. Just a breakfast. It's not a lot. Change who you are. Why? Because people are going to address you the way you are. You've had impossibility all your life. On the streets of London, things have changed now. That time, they arrest you on the road based on your immigration problem. So I always tell this story in many places. So I told them, when you are going out in the morning, go and get a white shirt. Buy a black suit, just one. And look for two ties. Two white shirts, two ties. Every morning you're going out, take a briefcase in your hand. Put on a tie and walk on the road. I said, walk on the road. Keep on going. I said, there is no policeman that will arrest you when you are properly dressed. I'm online. I mean, people are watching online. Ask them. So, you're going on the road, and somebody, they're arresting everybody. When they say, oh, go this way, sir. They say, sir, to you. Why? You look like a sir, not like a non-entity. <laughs> Glory be to God. Somebody shout, my glory, we are awake. Because you see, some of these things, you've got to be intentional. Pastor, uh, Pastor Lincoln said to be intentional about it. I told them, guys, dress properly. Even when you get somewhere and you want, don't be afraid of anybody. Stand tall, why? Christ in you, the hope of glory. The owner of the universe lives inside of you. And so gradually... People begin to change because they are hearing possibilities. Glory be to God. Ladies and gentlemen, glory is so important. I'm going to say one or two things, one, and then I'll, I'll be done. What can happen to people's glory? I'd like to share that with you for a moment. What can happen to people's glory? Apart from it going to bed, what can happen to people's glory? Glory of people can be announced your glory can announce you or announce itself. I'm trusting God that after this conference, your glory will announce itself. In Genesis 45 verse 13, Genesis 45 13, the Bible says, Joseph told his brethren, go and tell my father what you have seen. 
and of all my glory in Egypt. In other words, guys, you took my coat of many colors, which was my identity, my glory. But now after many years, I've been to the pit, I've been to the prison, I've been to, the, I've been to Potiphar's house, I've suffered all the, but now I have got glory. Go and announce my glory to my brethren. I don't know your story, sir, but I've come in the name of Jesus Christ. Your glory will yet announce itself this year in the name of Jesus. Wow. Please, let's clap for the man. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. So, glory can be announced. Ladies and gentlemen, glory also can be shown to you. Glory can be shown to you. Exodus 33 verse 18. Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. Glory can be announced. Glory can be shown to you. Also, may this never be your story. But glory can also depart. The fact that you have it now does not mean it's going to be perpetual if you don't guard it jealously. Glory can depart. You can't live in sin and say God's glory should announce itself. It doesn't work. It takes holiness and a deeper work with God for your glory to manifest more and more. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 4, 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 21 and 22, the wife of one of the sons of Eli, she gave birth to a child and called him Ichabod. Glory has departed. But you in IBC, I pray with you tonight, your glory will never depart. Amen. Oh, come on, say a better amen, please. Amen. Let your amen here be louder, please. Amen. Your glory will never depart. Your glory will never depart. But you know, the essence of this meeting is that your glory, number three, what can happen to your glory? Number four, is that your glory can be declared among the heathen. You see, it's no use to carry glory in church. And say, wow, I'm full of glory. And the glory only to ourselves. No, sir. Light is effective when there is darkness. So we need your glory, my glory, our glory, to be announced on the streets of Stockholm, on the streets of London, on the streets of Poland, on the streets of Russia, on the streets of Switzerland, on the streets of Luxembourg, on the streets of Brussels. Your glory should be declared among the heathen. First Chronicles 16, 24 tells you that. First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 24. Somebody shout, let my glory awake. So it can be announced among the heathen. He said, declare his glory where? Among the heathen. Declare his glory among the heathen. Now, what else can happen to people's glory? People's glory also can be stripped of them. They had it. They could lose it. But sometimes it can be taken off from them. In Job chapter 19 verse 9. Job 19 verse 9. Job said, my glory has been stripped from me. That could be a satanic attack. It could be an attack from the pit of hell. But tonight we are in this exalted, anointed place. And I declare over your life, whatever has been stripped of you, there shall be a restoration in Jesus' name. Yeah. Beloved, number five or six, as the case may be, glory can also be turned to shame. Now that's important. Glory can be turned to shame. Because the Bible says, in Psalm chapter 4, verse 2, Psalm chapter 4, verse 2, you can write that down. Psalm chapter 4, verse 2, glory can be turned to shame. Scripture says, O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? It was glorious, but it became a shame. That will never be your portion in Jesus' name. Now, now listen to this. In Hosea chapter 4, verse 7. Hosea 4, 7. The Bible says, as they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame. Somebody shout, minus me. Bible says, I blessed them. They were financially doing well. I increased them. But they sinned against me. So, I turned their glory to shame. 
That will never be your story. Then the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35. That's important to me. That's why I'm giving you a lot of scriptures on that. Proverbs 3, verse 35. The Bible says, and I read to you, the wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. That tells you that the glory can become a shame if one remains foolish. We've been taught tonight how to study the Bible, how to have education, how to receive information, impartation, and immersion. I'm a preacher. I'm quoting what we were taught. But if you remain a fool who does not listen to instruction, glory can become a shame. I know it's going to be quiet. It's all right. But I just need to tell you the truth. Look at your neighbor say, I will not be a fool. Oh, come on. Give that person a holy elbow. Say, I will not be a fool. I will not be a fool. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And, 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 then, and then, let me give you two more. And then we'll, we'll, we'll tidy it up. Glory also can fly away. Hosea chapter 9 verse 11. Glory can fly away. And I think it's important we remember these things so that we guard what God has given us jealously, develop them, and work with them. Glory can fly away. The Bible says, Hosea chapter 9 verse 11, As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird from the birth, from the womb, and from the conception. What have they done so much that God says, I'm going to let their glory fly away? Glory can fly away. But I'm also glad to announce to you, glory also can increase. Did you hear me? What can glory do? It can increase. In Hosea, in Agai chapter 2 verse 9, Agai 2 9, after God says, I will shake the heavens and the earth, said the glory of the latter shall be greater than the former. Now hear this, whatever glory you brought into IBC, you are going to move on with a greater glory. Come on, greater glory. I say greater glory. Greater manifestation of the glory of the Lord. Why? Glory can increase. So I could start at the bottom of the ladder. But sir, I do not have to stop here. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. He said, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. What happened to us? We are changed, transformed, metamorphosized into the same image. How? Even from glory to glory. Somebody shout from glory to glory. Come on, say again from glory to glory. So glory can increase. You don't have to stay at one level. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. I want to close in a minute and let you understand that in God, in Christ Jesus, your glory can be on the increase. Listen to me. It doesn't matter where you are now or what God has done with you. There is a higher level for you. It doesn't matter how great you are. It doesn't matter what you have accomplished. I come to announce to you, what did I say? There is a higher level. Why? The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more and more unto the perfect day. Higher level. Second Samuel chapter 3 verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 3 verse 1. Bible says, now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. The house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker and the house of David waxed out stronger and stronger. We were told today about the David anointing, the Cahill of David. And David's anointing kept getting better. Somebody shout better and better. Come on, talk to me. Shout better and better. Shout better and better. In other words, in other words, when I see you next year, you would have changed totally. It will be a better person, more anointed, more glorious, more beautiful, more powerful. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout glory to glory. That's David anointing, sir. Glory to God. It can get better. And so to, tonight, as you get ready to pray, you must understand that 
there is a dimension in God for you that you can get better. You can be more increased. As I conclude tonight, remember this and don't forget. Let me give one working definition and then I'll pray. Glory, finally, is the opposite of shame. That is the working definition for our prayer. Glory is what? Opposite of shame. There is nothing glorious in sickness. There's nothing glorious in poverty. There's nothing glorious in barrenness. There's nothing glorious in stunted church growth. No, absolutely not. In John chapter 2, verse 1 to 11, the Bible says they invited, there was a wedding at Cana of Galilee. Mary, just mother, was invited. And she brought her son along. And we are told that after a while, their wine ran out. Now, what made the wine run out, I don't know. Maybe there was a sabotage. Maybe there was a devil that turned down the tap. Maybe they over-invited people. Maybe the contractor cheated them. Anyhow, the wine ran out. And the mother of Jesus said, son, they have no wine. Hear this. Jesus said, mother, my time is not yet come. And the mother did something that my mom would have done. She just said, guys, whatever he tells you to do, do it. I imagine she did something like this. This was her handbag. You know, ladies' handbags are very pretty. So she must have told her PA, can I have my bag? Whatever he tells you to do, do it. And she left with her bag. <laughs> In other words, Jesus, you are on your own. <laughs> now, 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 imagine these guys are standing before Jesus. The mother had taken her bag and left for a cosmetic visit to the restroom. So Jesus is now confronted with this bully man standing. He had no choice but to do something. Ah. There is a place in God that you can stand before God. And heaven will not release you until they do something about your case. He said, go fetch water. That's not my interest. Did all manner of things. But you know what was interesting? When he told them, take the water to the master of ceremony. When they took the water, it became wine. In other words, shame that was coming to them turned to glory. The Bible says in John 2, 11, he manifested forth his glory. Everything confronting you that look like a shame. May God turn it to glory. 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 In the name of Jesus. In John chapter 4, the Bible says Jesus needed to go to a place, but he wanted to go through Samaria. Why? There was a woman who was full of shame. They said she had asked some husbands and she was living with somebody who is not her husband. So she would come out in the afternoon to fetch water by the well. Nobody was there but her. Jesus says, you are the one I need. Why? She was a carrier of glory that was asleep. And we needed to wake that glory up. But nobody knew about the glory except Jesus. So Jesus comes to her and says, woman, I need to talk to you. And they began to chat. The woman thought just was a customer. Or someone, you know, began to chat her up. And the woman said, listen, sir, you look like a prophet. You don't come to people like us. If you want water, I'll give you say, wait a minute. If you know who is talking to you, you would have asked for rivers of living water. And you will not be thirsty anymore. Cut a long story short. She had an encounter with Jesus. The woman of shame went back to the city and said, come and meet a man who has told me, who has encountered me. And the Bible said the whole city went with her. Ladies and gentlemen, her shame turned to glory. Nobody would talk to her before. Everybody followed her. After this meeting, when you do evangelism, you will win souls for the Lord. You will win souls unto the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, finally, Acts chapter 3. The Bible said there was a man laid at the gate called Beautiful. Who would have known that he was a carrier of glory? 
But shame had kept him in one place. He was begging for food. Can I have some money? I need some kronos to buy some food. And here come Peter and, and, and Peter and John. And they came to the temple. The Bible said he looked up to them happily if they would give something to him. The question is not so much about what he's asking. The question is so, it's about the glory in the man that was asleep. So, so Peter said, silver and gold we do not have. But such as we have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The man was going to mess up Peter's anointing. Peter said, no, this is by fire, by force. Held his hand and said, rise up and walk. And the man got up. Bible says his ankles were straight. His knees became straight. He began to walk. He began to leap. He started praising God. And he praised God so much that scripture says he came to a place. Down to the road they call it Solomon's porch. And people gathered. You know who gathered there? BBC gathered. CNN gathered. Fox News gathered. CBTV TV gathered. And they began to talk to the man. Began to ask him, what happened to you? He said, no. Once I was lame. Now I am delivered. There's a glory in me. He began to give interview to people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and begin to bless the Lord. Lift your voice and begin to bless the Lord. Marreketebo shata. Lebro sotorian de leblegedia. Hey, makata broyando sate. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, Makata Bragadia. We bless your name, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We praise your name, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Let the glory arise. Let the glory arise. Let the glory arise. Let the glory arise. Let the glory awake. In the name of Jesus, let the glory awake. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. The glory within me. Let there be a manifestation. Let there be an arousing. Let there be an awakening. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, let there be an awakening. Let there be an awakening. Let there be an awakening. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Maria Catabazo Telebregadia. Ekelebondo Zotorian de Lebo. Mesca Libre Yando Sate. Ekete Bragaduste. Elebondo Zita Libre Gadia. Lord, let there be an awakening. Let there be an awakening of every potential, of every ability that God has placed in you. Let it rise now. 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 Everything that looks like shame in your life tonight, we turn it around. We turn it around. We turn it around. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh God. E candele bosente, e candolo bosonto riande lebo, e le preketo santa rianda lava. Lord, let there be an awakening. Let there be an awakening. Let there be an awakening. Can somebody pray like you mean it? Mazo tali preyandosa, e kente preketiche, e le bondo zita li agadia, ma kata brakato zate, e le preketo zankati pregadia, e kalabando zate, e le kete baria gaduste. Come on, mande pro sate riande, let my glory. Glory awake, let my glory awake in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Let my glory awake. Listen to me. We don't have the time, but we have God on our side. Your life is too important to just be a spectator in life. No, tonight I prayed. Anyone working the wrong job in this place, may God's glory relocate you now. Ah, there's nothing glorious in fibroid. There's nothing glorious in asthma. There's nothing glorious in hemorrhaging. There's nothing glorious in sickness. When God's glory collides with your shape. It turns to glory. They knew the man before. The man at the gate called beautiful. But after the glory encounter, it became the object of good news. Ah, tonight I ask and I pray that tonight, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever is a shame in your life, as the Lord our God liveth, because of this awakened glory, 
it shall turn to new beginning for you. I, 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 I want to close. Please hear me now. The only reason why that gentleman in Acts chapter 3, why is shame turned to glory? In John chapter 4, our shame turned to glory. In John chapter 2, their shame, family shame, turned to glory was simply because they encountered Jesus. Now, if you don't encounter Jesus, there can be no glory. Whatever you have will be transient. It doesn't follow you to eternity. But true glory comes and when you have an encounter with Jesus. Would you close your eyes for a moment in this place? My brother, my sister, you're here tonight. You want to say, Pastor, I want to connect with Jesus. I want to have a relationship with him. I want to become a Christian. I want to be born again. So that our prayers can make sense to you. Wherever you are. You don't need to. There's no drama. You don't have to somersault or fall down. No. You want to say, Pastor, I would like to give my life to Jesus. I want to reconnect with Jesus. I don't want to be a shadow of myself. Wherever you are, would you like to just slip your right hand up? I'll just acknowledge you and then we'll pray together. Anyone like that in the house? Just slip your hand up. That's all I want to see. Nothing beyond that. Thank you for that hand. God bless you. I can see that hand. Who else? Just slip your hand up wherever you are. Thank you for the hand. Thank you for the hand. God bless you. Thank you for the hand. Thank you. I can see five of you. Co continue. Just lift it up. That's all. Wherever you are. That's all. That's all. Just, Jesus, I want to reconnect you to. That's all that matters. No, thank you for that hand. I can see you. I can see you. Jesus also is looking at you right now. Listen, it doesn't matter how long you've been in church. All that matters is you are settling your account with Jesus. Now raise it high wherever you are. And just pray with me. Pray with me where you are with those hands up. Say, my dear Lord Jesus, tonight I connect with you again. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Break the power of sin over my life. From today, let my glory awake in the name of Jesus. If, if you have prayed that prayer and you are serious, do you want to come forward? Quickly, quickly. You raise up your hand. You pray that prayer. Come, come and join me quickly. You see, and don't look around. Your hand is up. Come forward very quickly, very quickly. Very quickly, very quickly. If you just stand, my brother, very quickly. I saw about seven of you. Don't be afraid. It doesn't matter who you are. Just come. That's all that matters. There's no drama. Absolutely. Come on. Let's celebrate Jesus for these ones. The devil has just lost again. Who else is coming? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. You see, we are your brothers. And our desire is that you become all that God has created you to be. That's the essence of this conference. So I'm going to implore you, brethren. Do you want to stretch your hands towards them and pray for them? Shall we do that together? Guys, open up your hands like this. Do something in front. Just to receive from the Lord. Let's pray for them. That God's power will rest on them. His glory will be upon them. Let's pray that God's presence will be in their life. Let's pray that God will touch them. It will heal them. Let's pray that God will perfect all that concerns them. Would you pray that the glory of the Lord shall become manifest in them in the name of Jesus? Please, let's do that together. Let's pray for these ones. Let's intercede for them. Come on. Brethren, it could be you standing. Let's intercede for them that the Lord will write their name in the book of life. Come on now. Let's pray for them that they will never lose their glory. No, no, no. Shame shall be far from them in the name of the Lord. Father, we ask that please write their names in the book of life. The devil has lost it over these ones in the name of Jesus. Lord, we present them to you, spirit, soul, and body, in the name of the Lord. Father, thank you for your hand upon your daughter, in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your hand. Thank you. I'm just touching them. Thank you for your hand. In the name of Jesus, thank you for your hand. Thank you for your hand upon her. Thank you for your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be healing power of God to manifest glory on your life, sir. In the name of Jesus, let the hand of God be upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I give you praise. In Jesus' name we are prayed. 
please open your eyes and look at me for a moment. Nothing dramatic, but I can assure you one thing. When you get to your home, your workplace is tonight, you will realize that something has changed in you. You will love God more. You will pray better. You will love to read the Bible a little bit more. I didn't stay long to pray for you, but there's a fire inside of you from today. And you are going to become new people. Come on, let's celebrate them. God bless you. Bless your son. Let it be well with him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody rise up on your feet. Amen and amen. And let's give God the loudest shout of hallelujah possible. Please follow that lady there. Follow her. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead and do so. Let's give God the loudest shout of praise possible. Come on. Shout hallelujah. One more time. Shout hallelujah. And for the last time, with everything inside of you, give God a shout of hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at our neighbor say, my glory is awake. Go and tell five people, tell them, five people, my glory is awake, my glory is awake. Go and tell them, God bless you.
Yes, clap your hands again and give him all the glory. Yes, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Wow. Wow. Someone help me and say, wow. Wow. Please take your seats. Wow, 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 wow. These are powerful nights, you know. We can never be the same again. Thank you so much, Dr. David. Thank you. Let's clap our hands and appreciate me. And uh, we request you to come back to IBC. We request you to come back. How, how many of you back me up? Yes. Wonderful. So we are continuing in this atmosphere. We, we don't disconnect. We continue. Pastor Lincoln took us somewhere. And uh, uh, Dr. David picked us from that very place where Pastor Lincoln left us and he, he has taken us to another level and, and uh, Dr. Pat is coming I, I, I don't know where we you know <laughs> wow greater levels praise God so now we need to worship the Lord with our giving and prepare ourselves to fly Okay, we're going to give and prepare ourselves to fly. Praise the Lord. I want to challenge you tonight to connect with the grace IBC has. Look at what God is doing here. And one of the things we emphasize at IBC is we want the glory to come from the platform to the people. Okay? And so we, we are dealing with impartations here, okay? So you are receiving impartations. You, something is being activated. These fathers and mothers here are activating that sleeping glory in you. So we want to sow seeds. We want to connect with the anointing. And I, and I believe you understand the language I'm using. Okay? Because we are deeper. We are deeper. We connect with what God is doing. And there are so many ways we connect. One of them is sowing seed. Sowing seed. Sowing seed. Giving. Praise God. Giving. So I want us to connect with IBC. Uh, they, they will give us the switch numbers and uh, the bank zero. But I'm going to ask the ushers who have these papers to stand. Uh, you know, closer. Please come closer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have these forms here. These are for IBC partners. Now, you can partner with us and give 25 a month for one year. 50, 100, 150, or 200 for a year or more. You can give 1,000 or 2,000 per year. But you can also give a one time gift. And we thank you, our partners that have supported us for the last four years. You have done well. And, and, and you can see your seed. You can see what God is doing from your giving. But uh, you know, you, you can give per month, but you can also give a one time gift. And what I would like you to do is uh, take this form. Please put up your hand if you need it. Take this form and uh, write your name, you, your email address, and your phone number. 
and uh, tick one of these boxes or write down one-time gift and tell us how much you're giving. And uh, you can send it on the account that you have on the small paper. There is an information here, the small paper, uh, I mean the small part. Um, tear it off and go with it and leave the big one with us, okay? So that we can have your information and you take our information, okay? You can give at home, you can give here, but connect with what God is doing. There are more hands over there, please give, give them the forms. Connect w- with what God is doing. Connect with what God is doing. There's another hand over here. Ashes, please be quick. You don't want to spend any more time on this. You want to go quick. Yeah, okay. So, um, all right. All right, all right. Please leave this part with us, uh, the big one. Leave it with us and take the small part of the paper, which has our bank details. Okay, all right. So, uh, those of you that want to uh, give by Swish, do we have it? Yeah, that is the Swish number. That is our Swish number. Indicate IBC, because all the offerings we raise in this conference don't go to CCI. Uh, they go to IBC. And uh, during IBC, uh, we spend a lot. Of course, you know that. I don't want to explain so much. But even after IBC, we travel and mobilize. Uh, we travel a lot. We go to different places and mobilize uh, people. There are a lot of people that are not able to be here, but uh, we have mobilized them and they are watching online. Uh, yesterday we had uh, 1,500 people online. They watched yesterday's service. Right now in Mombasa, there are 70 people yesterday and today they are sitting in one place watching IBC. Praise God. So God is doing something bigger than what we see here. It is a movement gathering internationals. Amen? Equipping internationals to go out there and manifest Christ impacting Europe. We are not foreigners. We are not refugees. And we will never be. Praise God. Okay, so let's give. Please stand up on your feet. We're going to worship the Lord. I want to honor Pastor Simon Nweze. He's here with us today. God bless you so much. He has, he has written a very good book. Uh, please buy his books. I announced them yesterday. Please buy his books uh, about worship. Worship disorders in church. Yeah, so uh, please buy that book. Praise God. <laughs> buy that book. Uh, we are very sorry. I've heard that uh, Dr. Patty's books are sold out. So I don't know how we're going to fix that problem because I had people. Yeah, you can order online. You can order online, okay? So the people that have been lining up, give them um, um, information where they can order. Um, I believe we have some cards there. Yeah. Okay? Praise the Lord. Are we ready to give? Let's stand up on our feet and worship the Lord as we give. Praise God. Father, I want to thank you for everyone that is giving, everyone that has become a partner. We are conquering Europe together. Thank you for our partners, those that have been giving and sowing and working so hard, and those new people that have signed up today to partner with us. I want to thank you because the gospel shall be preached on this continent. In Jesus' name, bless everyone here today. Receive our worship. Receive our giving. We are givers at IBC. We love you, Jesus. That's why we give. That's why we worship you. Amen. Somebody slap your hand. These are the days of Elijah. These are the days of Elijah. Speak it loud. 
order. In these are the days of your servant, for sins, righteousness be restored. And though these are the days of very trial, of famine and darkness and sorrow, still hear the voice in the desert cry, the day. Jesus and I may say <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo. Well, turn to your neighbor and say it is wonderful. This is authentic. Yeah, it is authentic. There is no drama. There is it's just this, you know, natural. Kingdom, joy, peace, love, grace, no drama. We are simple people experiencing His glory. Hallelujah! Woo! Let me say this again. Let me, let me, let me say this again. There's no drama at IBC. 
No, 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 no. We are ordinary people experiencing the glory of God. Experiencing Kail glory. Ordinary people. Ordinary people. But we are powerful. We are powerful. We carry the glory of God. We are powerful. Yes, say, I am powerful. Uh, 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 I say, I am powerful. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. I want to take this honor once again. I'm so privileged. My heart is rejoicing to invite on the stage my mother. Dr. Pat Francis. Wow. Let's clap unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We thank God for his presence. We thank God for the mighty words that we have been getting. We have been fed by the best. Wow. Pastor Lincoln and Grace and Dr. Wilberforce, my son, and Dr. David, who just stirred us up now and got us all on fire. And wow, the Holy Spirit is here. And we want to acknowledge what God is doing in hearts. Because people of God, I am not going to be the same. <laughs> I'm going from glory to glory, from revelation to revelation. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lift your hands and just worship him some more. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are here, moving in our I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, I worship you, great maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. You're working, you never stop, you never stop. 
stop one You never stop, you never stop one Woo! Even when I don't see it, you walk it Even when I don't feel it, you walk it You never stop, you never stop walk it You never stop for this great worship team. Wow. <laughs> Dr. Wilberforce, you have to bring them to Canada. Mm. I invite you all to Canada. <laughs> Kingdom Enforcers 2020. Praise God. Please be seated in his wonderful presence. And tonight, I want to talk about the Midianite spirit. And we have a PowerPoint that will be coming up. But now there is a move of God that's happening and we can see it in IBC. And I believe that God is fixing to have the greatest revival in the history of humanity. We can go please to PowerPoint too. There are no more books. But this move of God is not going to be a big name move. I believe it's going to be grassroots. It's going to be ordinary people like you and I, the church, everybody in the church is going to be awakened to the glory that is inside of them. And then we're going to be operating in double glory because that, that is our potential. And so in the book of Acts, when the disciples were waiting because Jesus told them to wait and you will receive power. 
the glory of God came in that place and it was tangible because the glory of God can be seen, it can be heard, and it can be experienced. And so God, to make the people know that he's there, violent wind, it was a dramatic day. Tongues of fire were literally coming down and landing on each one. But then after that Shekinah glory, which means God was with them, then the glory slipped inside of them, and now God was not only with them, but in them. And the disciples understood that clearly. So by faith, they left the upper room knowing that they would never be the same again. And that's what we want for this conference. We are going to leave here knowing we're never the same again. We have been stirred up. We have understood glory. We understand about knowledge and, and how to study and how to immerse ourselves so that we can grow. I mean, God is giving us the practical of what to do. But 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Christ in us, the Hebrew word that God is using to describe his glory is the word kail. And kail is a Hebrew word that is very powerful like the word shalom. Because it's not just word. And see, when we are talking about God's glory, there's no one word you can use. And so when we use the word even peace for shalom, it's much more than that. So when you use one Hebrew word, it actually, it can be about 20 different interpretations. So the fullness of God, the Kayil glory, is powerful and great. And so in Luke 21, 27, Jesus says, At that time you're going to see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. He describes his glory as powerful and great. And so in Psalm 57, 8, David who is the offspring of Jesus, and Jesus called himself the root of David, and identify with David, this David had a revelation of God as the king of glory. And he will praise, and he will worship, and he will say, ask me something, ask me, who is the king of glory? And he will say, the Lord strong and mighty, the word strong and mighty is Kail. Who is the king of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. The words mighty in battle in the Hebrews, Kayil. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts is the king of glory. The word host is Kayil. So El Kayil is Lord of glory. The one who has an army of angels and the one who's raising up an army in his church. And so this kind of principality that is plaguing the world God is pronouncing it is time for judgment, time for repentance, time for revival. And so David was praying, God, awake my glory. As we heard tonight, it means my full potential. I'm living in a cave. I'm homeless. I cannot die like this. I'm running from Saul. He's trying to kill me. I'm a fugitive, God Almighty. And you came to my father's house and you anoint me as king. And now I'm a beggar. Something is wrong. And that is the key, people. When the enemy steals things from us, don't act as if it's the norm. If we're living in poverty, we cannot see it as a norm. If we have sickness, we don't say, well, God did it. No, something is wrong. And we're willing to fight it. We're willing to change the circumstance. It means that Satan has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. So David says, I'm not going to die living in a cave. It's not going to happen. That's not my glory. Awake my glory. Awake my potential. Awake my kingdom. Awake my prosperity. Awake my success. Awake, oh God, awake my glory. And God heard him. And right there in the cave, 400 of top warriors came. People of God, glory is so powerful that people will come to serve your purpose without money. 
glory is so powerful and that's when you know it's a God thing because David had nothing to offer them. He didn't even own a home. He was living as a fugitive. He was homeless. He wasn't just poor. He was homeless. And 400 men came and said, David, we have come to do one thing, to make you king. Glory is going to send people to you to fulfill your purpose. Who am I talking to? I said, glory is working. Glory is visiting you. And so we want to talk about the Midianite spirit in Judges chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. It says, whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, the Malachites, and other eastern people invaded the country. They camped on the land and they ruined the crop all the way to Gaza. They did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither one sheep, one cattle, or one donkey. The Midianite spirit is a ravishing spirit. It just doesn't come to steal from you. It comes to wipe you out. It will, it will, de it will determine to affect every area of your life. And it's a wicked spirit because they could take some and leave some, but no, they wanted to starve the Israelites. It has no conscience. And in the next verse, in Judges 6, verses 5 and 6, it says they came up with their livestock and their tents like a swarm of locusts. It was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravish it. Midian was so impoverished that the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. The word impoverished means reduced to bankruptcy, lose everything, deprived of strength, deprived of creativity, deprived of everything. You're so low that you can't even think how to get out of it. It is so worse. One, I remember I have a friend who was in ministry, and he made some financial mistakes. And so he had to run from one nation to another nation because people want to kill him. And it was about a year after that, I saw him at a conference, and I said, how are you doing? He says, it's bad. He says, the enemy has destroyed my money, my ministry, and my marriage. He says, I think the word suicide. And I think that this is, this, I, I, I don't want to live. I, I am so low. And I said, you will live and not die. I said, come to our church and let us work together. And I want to help you to reinvent your life. Because I tell you, this ravishing spirit, people of God, and it is so wicked that it attacks you in every area. It makes you work hard without results. And it's one of the hardest things when you're trying so hard and you have tried many businesses and it's not working to the point where you don't like to go to Christmas. You don't want to go to family. You don't want them to ask you again, where, what is your job? You don't want anybody to question you because it comes with shame. The Midianite spirit. It not only comes to steal, but to take everything. It weakens your strength. It dampens your power. It destroys your faith in people. So you don't even trust anybody anymore. And then it gets you, trying to get you to blame God. Trying to get you to curse God and die. That was the kind of spirit that attacked Job. And his wife said to him, Job, just curse God and die. Death is better than this. And you know, I've been listening to the news, and there's a spirit of darkness that is coming upon the earth. Some of the greatest singers are saying, I couldn't take the darkness anymore. Some of the greatest professionals, and they're, they're committing suicide because I can't take it anymore. And when you hear the word darkness, 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 church, let your ears speak because it means the glory of the Lord is going to rise upon you. Because when the darkness begins to increase, then the glory upon you is going to increase. The darkness. And so Gideon, he was, he was depressed, he, he, he was upset, and in Judges 6, 11 to 12, it says the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Josh the Abizrite, and his son Gideon was threshing wheat in the winepress to keep it from the Midianites. He couldn't have fight them, so he tried to outsmart them. He hid the wheat in the last place where they would find it. He put them in a wine press. 
And in the middle of this, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and says, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. In other words, God, look at that man that is bankrupt. Look at the man that is impoverished. Look at the man that is scraping for fruit and declare him in his future. You are a mighty warrior. I see you as a mighty warrior and the Lord is with you. Therefore, now, tonight, everything is going to change. I have come down to fight with you, for you, and through you to bring the victory. And so tonight, people of God, the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the sick say, I am healed. In the name of Jesus, move into the future. As we heard teaching from Pastor Lincoln, move into the future and get your miracle and bring it back now and say, now I am healed. Now I am rich. Now I am strong. Is somebody ready to fight this thing? In the name of the Jesus, we're going to crush that spirit tonight. He said, the Lord is with you. Judges chapter 6, verse 13, Gideon began to argue with God. But, sir, Gideon said, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our father told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? You come to me to talk about God. You come to me to tell me I'm mighty. Don't you know what's happening? And he says, God, you have abandoned us. You put us in the hand of the Midian. Don't tell me you're with us, God, because you've been hurting us. When I read this, I say, God, he's literally putting God in his place. He's literally scolding God. And I say, God, how come these people talk to you like that? I mean, David will say, God, kill off my enemies. And if God don't know how to do it, he tell them what to do, burn them up. And he tell them, I say, God, we're supposed to love our enemies. What is this? How come if I pray that way, I have to repent in the name of Jesus? How come these people doing that? And God make me recognize the power of his love. You see, when you're in a relationship of love and covenant and trust, you can be yourself. God is not intimidated by you. His son is hurting. His son is frustrated. His son has been going through a lot and he doesn't even know how to go home and tell his wife, I don't have any more food. He look at the kids and it's not working. And now God is going to call me mighty this and mighty that. God, it won't work. You abandoned us. And I don't want to hear any scripture because I'm hurting. You have failed. I have prayed and you didn't answer. God, how come you allow that? And God show me that there's nothing you can do to stop my love. And at times when we're hurting so much that we can say, God, I want to give up. God, you're not there. God, I'm angry. I'm angry. He says that those times I just hold you. I let you vent. And I let you say whatever you do, but I will never let you go. I love you enough for you to be yourself in my presence. That crushes the religious spirit right there. Because people of God, God is not here to condemn you. He's here to heal you. And there are times he had to hold David together. David says, I look to the hills from him, come at my help. My help is in the name of the Lord. I don't have anybody. Mother forsake me. Father forsake me. You're the only one I have, God. And he bawled his eyes and God held him. People of God, when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, he holds you together. It's called the keeping power of glory. The glory is not only when you do a mighty thing, but the glory thing is when you're at your lowest and you're held together and you keep your mind. You don't lose your mind. You don't go crazy. It means glory is holding you. You understand what I'm saying? The love of God is so powerful for you. 
that when you get angry, he'll hold you. He understands, Job, I know what you're saying. You're arguing with me, but I know what you're saying. And he is so powerful, and he loves you so much that you can be yourself. He is not there to condemn you. He's there to keep you. He's there to love you. Just lift up your hands and just love him back and say, God Almighty, I love you. I love you. After a while, David says, okay, okay, God. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. You will make me lie down in green pasture. You will restore my soul, oh God. I, even if I go to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And he spoke the word back into himself and begin to worship again. Oh, people of God, let's worship again. You talk it through with God in honesty. It's okay to be honest. And then David would end by saying, nevertheless, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will be in my mouth. And I will never stop blessing God. And he blessed, and he blessed, and he blessed, and he blessed until freedom comes. And he says, I can kill a giant. Oh, people of God. <laughs> the powerful love of God. That he will never let you go. He understands our humanity. He understands the flesh. He understands the fight in your life. And he's there to keep you. And he has given you a word. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Because he's going to see to it that the enemy cannot go too far. Because he needs you. You're alive for a time such as this. And I'm here to give you the message tonight. Together we're going to crush that assignment in your life. And God says enough is enough. In Judges 6.14. Even though Gideon was telling off God, God turned to him and says, go in the strength you have. In other words, you have strength. You have glory. It is dormant. Save Israel. You are the answer, church. And this is what the message to the church is. No matter how you feel like you're nothing, no matter how you feel that like you're not a big name, in you there is glory. Go in the strength you have, church of Jesus Christ. And the most ordinary is going to manifest the greatest glory. Go in the strength you have. The church must save the world. Save Israel out of Midian hands. Am I not sending you? And I'm saying, God, you're not even answering the negative. You keep speaking the positive. In other words, you're not getting into anything with Gideon. The more he vents is the more you speak the truth. Because when God speaks, it creates. In other words, I'm creating, I'm awakening, I am speaking into your life, I'm speaking into your spirit, I am awakening your glory, Gideon, because I know more about you than you know for yourself. So people of God, you can put yourself down, but God is saying, my glory is in you, and it will be awakened, and you will amaze your own self of what you can do. And so he began to do what we all do. We tell Jesus and we tell God 15 reasons why it can't be me. So he began to argue himself out of the miracle. But Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? You know, I believe the angels of God are fed up with believers. Every time an angel comes to give a message from God to his people, they always talk to the angel as if they think God don't have any sense. Mary says, how can I get pregnant? I'm a virgin. In other words, does God not understand about the birds and the bees? I mean, Moses says, how can me? It can't be me you're talking to because I can't talk. I mean, every time the angel come with a message from God to a person, that person doubt God. In other words, Moses it's not just about you. I am with you. Gideon, understand, I am with you. What does it mean? It means God is with you. When God is with you, what does it mean? All things are possible. 
Discipline your mind. Discipline your mind to step into the next realm because you are your enemy. You don't need a demon anymore. You're talking yourself out of your miracle. You're talking yourself into the sickness. You're talking yourself into the fear. You're talking yourself into the poverty. Discipline your mind and speak what God says about you. Gideon says, it's impossible. My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. God had to deliver him from despair. God had to deliver him from poor self-image. I am the weakest. And then on top of that, I am the least in my family. In other words, I, I live with shame. I'm trying to be honest with you, God. Because if this is a mistake, then let's deal with it now. I'm trying to tell you the reality of what my life is. I am the least in my family. And that I'm the worst of the worst and the least of the least. You don't know the mistakes I've made. You don't know the poverty I'm going through. You don't understand that it's not possible, God. And God ignored it. The Lord answered, I will be with you. You understand? I will be with you. And let me tell you what you're going to do. You're going to strike down all the Midianites together. People of God, God is here. God is here. He's with his church. Let God arise. Let God arise. He's with his church. I used to sing that song, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. I didn't even know what I was singing because he was, even though I was singing, let God arise, I was expecting him to come down. I never know arise means get out of my belly. I didn't know arise means wake up your glory. You're waiting for me to come down. I am with you. Now let me arise in you. Let God arise in you to scatter the enemies of your soul. Scatter the enemies of the man's mind. Scatter the enemies of the man's spirit. One, one of my daughters now, she shared her testimony in, in our program. And when I met her first, she was abused as a child, powerfully abused. And the enemy would tell her she's nothing. And family members watched her abuse and did nothing about it. And she came in and she's sharing this thing and she says, I think I'm stupid. I keep hearing it in my voice, you're stupid. And so she shared that she went to school and she will sleep with everybody because she wanted love. And she shared on the program that one night I did that and then the person turned around and cursed her. And she said, I felt like nothing. And so we talked and we talked and we talked and she went through healing in the name of Jesus. And today she's the principal of a school. Her glory was awakened. Come on, somebody say, awake my glory. Say, awake my potential. Say, awake my brilliance. Awake my creativity. Satan is wicked. God says, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites. God had to take away the hopelessness because faith is the substance of things hoped for. This man was left without hope, and he was seeing all the pain. He was seeing the present, but now God going to move, and he's going to heal him from the inside out. In the pain, he's going to receive joy. In the lack, he's going to get abundance. In the trial, he has to see victory, and in the turmoil, he has to now see peace. And finally, it worked. And in Judges 6, 17, Gideon says, if I have found favor in your eyes, if it's really you, please help me to get my miracle. Give me a sign, God, that it's you talking to me because my wife called me crazy. I think I'm crazy. I've been through so much. Please help me with my miracle. Give me a sign. Be patient with me, God, because I want to get out of it. I don't want to die like this. 
Oh, don't, don't stop work with me, God. Is it really you? And his soul became alive. And he began to hope again. It might be God. It means that I'm favored. God has come down. And the Bible says Gideon recognized that he had many signs. God, is it you again? Give me another sign, please. Work with me, God. Be patient. I've been so low that I need my faith to be restored. And people of God in Judges 6.24, this is a personal encounter with God. This is what we're calling a personal altar. You see, this is why God made me write that book on altars. Because when we pray and you have an altar, it's an encounter with God. You can make a transaction. You go to the altar, you should leave there if you're weak, strengthened. You should leave there if you're sick, healed. You should leave there if you're confused with revelation and critical stuff. God, we, the, God is showing us that the altar is so powerful. The occult understand it, but now Christian has to understand the benefit of meeting with the I am. The benefit of not just going to a prayer meeting. But I'm meeting with God. I meet with some of my pastors at 6 o'clock every morning. And when we meet there, I said, when you leave this altar, you are like God. One of my pastors, a senior accountant with the team that he worked for. And he says, Mom, I have to go before an auditing team. And they are so rough. I said, uh-uh-uh, you go now like God. You sit and you look at them and you recognize who is with you. Open your mouth and he will fill you. And you will, you will shock yourself at the glory that will be seen. He went for the interview and he went through the audit. And audit can be very, very scary. And he came and he called and he says, wow, it was amazing what happened. God came in that place. People of God, this is what IBC is about. We're going to take God in the workplace. We're going to show God in the situation. We're going to walk in the glory of God. And wherever we go, we manifest God. When God is with you, you don't fear their faces. Even if they don't like you, they will love you. You understand what I'm saying? That's how glory, come on, put up your hands. Even if they don't like you, they will love you. They might not like you because of the color of your skin. They might not like you because you remind them of, your, of their mother-in-law. All kind of prejudice could happen. But even if they don't like you, they're going to love you because glory make you attractive. It is an attractiveness because when you open your mouth, they will hear a sound. When you smile, they will see glory. When you talk, they will hear glory. When you're silent, they will feel glory. And all of a sudden, they are going to say, what can I do for you up to half of the kingdom? Are you getting ready for the transfer? I'm talking about the transfer that is coming to the church. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Come on, Esther. Hey, man. Hey, man is going to give you his house. Who am I talking to right now? I said, hey, man is going to give you his house. The wealth of the wicked is laid up. Come on, take it by force. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray in the spirit. Mrashe kamande. Your enemies will bless you. Your enemies will bless you. I'm talking to somebody here today. I said your enemies will bless you. Come on, Esther. Come on, Daniel. Come on, Joseph. Your enemy will bless you. Glory has found you. Glory has found you. Glory is awakening you. Glory is awakening you. Your enemies will bless you. Remeshanda. Mekaramakashanda. He built an altar and he called it peace. The kind of altar that will break the spirit of mammon. The kind of altar that will shut down the Midianite spirit that is ravishing. Some of you, it's a generational thing. Some of you, land has been stolen from you. Your family had this, and now it doesn't have this. And so God is saying, enough is enough now. 
enough is enough now. This is payback time because Gideon is going to get awake. I said Gideon is rising up. Gideon is not depressed anymore. Gideon is not afraid anymore. Gideon now is awakened. The altar. The altar is a gate. It, 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 it opens literally a portal. So when we're meeting God and we declare, the prayer meeting is a prayer meeting, but you change the prayer meeting into an altar by your declaration. And so we declare in an open portal. It is a meeting place with spiritual power. Come on, people, let's shift. The occult understand this. They go to their altars and a demon turn up. When you go to your altar, the king of glory turn up, people of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight, it's an altar. Tomorrow morning, it is an altar. And God, every six o'clock, wait on us until we turn up. And when I turn up before God, I say, God, we're to build the altar this morning. And I am the wood in this fire because I'm not just an intercessor, but I'm a solutionist. And my mind shift. It is an encounter. It's an interaction. It is a transaction. It is a place of exchange. I came here weak, but I leave here strong. I came here poor, but I leave here rich. I came here sick, but I leave here healed. Why? Because I met God. I didn't meet a demon. Are you hear what I'm saying? I meet God. Come on, lift up your hand. God is right over you right now. God is here. It's a place to establish a legal ground. That's why the mission of the Carry the Glory movement is that we will release people to build altars in every home, in every school, in every workplace, in every place, until we infuse the whole community with altars to Jesus Christ and the Dagon spirit will fall. That is the power of the altar. You bring the presence and the demon fall. You don't even have to fight it. Just bring the present. And when you bring the present, you just smile with them at work. In the name of Jesus. Then you break, make the altar. And all of a sudden, witchcraft starts to scream. And things start to happen. And you just keep smiling. And then, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. You give Jesus the right to establish his kingdom. It's called mission infusion. It allows God, it becomes a Wi-Fi. It literally has influence around. So anybody that live around me, the glory from my house is like a Wi-Fi. The glory is touching them and they don't even know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because I have a halter in the name of Jesus. We don't have house blessing anymore. We, we're not just blessing house. We're building altars. Over my house, there's an open portal, and there is a no-flight zone for demons. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because it's not a house. It is an altar. When I go on the plane, I build my altar, and I could get up and tell everybody, hello, be at peace. God is here. <laughs> an altar to Jesus Christ. And Gideon in Judges 8, 28, he built his altar. He teared down the altars of Baal because God gave him instruction. And people of God, when you're at your altar, you must listen for the instruction. So he had to tear down the altars of, of Baal that his father had built. But in Judges 8, 28, I want you to read that. It says, thus Midian was subdued before the Israelites and it did not raise its head again. During Gideon's lifetime, the land enjoyed peace for 40 years. What am I saying? I'm saying that God is going to chop off the head tonight and this will never visit you again. In other words, it will no longer be an anniversary demon. 
You take one step forward, two step backward, one step forward. No, no more anniversary demon. This thing is coming down tonight. And as long as you're alive, you will never see this again. Are you ready? Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Midianite spirit will be crushed by the spirit of Gideon, which is the glory of God in you. Let's stand to our feet right now. Are you ready to fight? Do you know what the Midianite spirit is in your family? Do you know what it is that you have to rise up and say in the name of Jesus no more? That spirit of po poverty, that spirit that blocks people from speaking the truth of what God says about them. That spirit that tells you shut your mouth. That spirit that tells you you're no good. You cannot say I am powerful. You cannot even say, can you even say I'm healed? Can you say anything good about yourself? That's a lying spirit. That's a compromised spirit. We're going to speak what? What God says and the enemy is not going to muzzle our mouth again. We belong to Jesus. We are vessels of glory. We are powerful. We are strong. God in us is mighty. God in us is healer. God in us is deliverer. God in us is a mighty warrior. El Kail. El Kail. Lord of hosts. Mighty warrior. In the name of Jesus. People of God, in the name of Jesus, the enemy has been fooling with you, trying to tell you this thing is generational and you have to keep it, whether it's generational or not. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, it's coming down. You might be the first one. When I work with all my young people, I said, you will be the first one that own a home. We started a home acquisition program in our church and 200 people bought homes. They thought they could not do it. One lady, she says, I can't. I've never owned a home. My parents never owned a home. My grandparents never owned a home. I used to live in South America. I went to Guyana, and I never owned a home. And I'm now in Canada, and I've never owned a home. I said, yes, that was the past. I met her a year later, and I said, she's in one of the books that I write. I said, did you get a house? Oh, pastor, I bought my second home. <laughs> I went to Korea, and the, the man that hosts all these American speakers every year, and he loves Jesus and he loves orphans, but he never felt that as a Christian, he should own a home. And so the American says, Pat Francis, talk to him. And I said, no, you talk to him. I'm new, you know. <laughs> I don't want to make any waves. I, I want to, you know, be quiet. And, but then I went out with that man, and I felt love. I said, you're my brother. And I said, you know, I really feel a kindred spirit. And, and tell me again why you don't want to own a home. He says, because I make a vow that I would look after offerings, orphans, and I, I, I just feel that God will take care of me. So I said, you have sons and you tell me that you send them to the best school. Yes. And, and you're telling me that you, you have sons and you, you give them in ex, 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 school abroad. Yes. Why? Because you love them. Oh, yes. So I said, you know, you people talk about the love of the father. You write all kind of book. But you don't know the love of the father. Is God your father? Yes. And I said, would you allow him to bless you? Is it a sin if he blesses you? You don't feel his love? I said to him, when you go away and you have kids and you come home and, and they're looking for gifts and they're excited, doesn't it excite your heart when they said, oh, uh, I, you, daddy's bringing me something, mommy's bringing, don't you feel excited? And he says, yes. I said, will you allow God the privilege of being excited when he sees the love in your face, when he sees the joy in your face? Is it okay for you to allow him to pamper his son? You have been so faithful. Will you give him permission to bless you with a piece of dirt before you go to heaven? Because you're going to have a serious problem with heaven. You will not feel comfortable there. Because he's going to give you a mansion and you're going to think that he, God is sinning because he's so opulent. I said, will you give him permission to bless you? And he says, I, I, yes, yes. And that night before I spoke, 
I said, you know, this man has been faithful and he shares this all over the world. This man has been so faithful. And I said, he doesn't have a house. And I said, we need to do something about it and I will give first. And I, and I put it at his feet. And then people began to give. And one of the men that I took to my trade delegation, he was a member of that church. And I said, I want you to take care of this money. I don't want elders touch it. I don't want deacons touch it. I need a businessman to take care of it and buy it for him because he will get a home. Would you believe the next morning, the same billionaire, a part and plus what we give, he got a condominium for $800,000. It was there all along, waiting. But God didn't have permission. Because the poverty spirit telling him that the God who owns the world is too stingy to bless his children. Lift your hands and say, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Ramashanda. In the name of Jesus, we're going to crush these demon spirits that have been calling themselves religious spirit and putting lies. They defame Jesus. They talk negative about Jesus. They talk negative about your father. They make you think your daddy don't love you. They make you think your daddy don't own the whole world. The wealth is God. The blessings is God. Make you think that daddy doesn't love you enough and it's a lie. And that Midianite spirit, God has come down and says, enough is enough in the name of Jesus. People of God, are you ready? Are you ready to say like Gideon, I'm ready to crush that spirit? If you are ready to crush that spirit, just run to the altar right now and say, God, I'm at this altar and I'm not going to keep this spirit with me in the name of Jesus. But God himself is going to touch you tonight, people. God himself is going to touch you tonight. Reshe karaba kasanda. Let's just pray in the spirit, people. Pray in the spirit. No, let them come forward. Let them come forward. God is going to touch them tonight. Right where you stand, it's going to be an altar. Right where you stand, it's going to be an altar. Reshe karama kasanda. At the altar, just begin to pray. At the altar, come on, Gideon. Just begin to pray because God is with you. God is with you. In the name of Jesus, the Midianite spirit the is steal falling. and kill, destroy. Come on now. I hear the chains falling. We sing it now. Come on, Come on. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. I hear the chains falling. Come on, Jesus Come on, Gideon. War for your blessing. War for your blessing. I There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power. There is power. To break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. People, lift up your hands at the altar. Lift up your hands. Robosia. Bible says, two shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done. Jesus Christ is at this altar. He is the King of glory. He is not only with you, but he's in you. So just begin to open your mouth and worship him until your belly, until you feel that glory coming out of your belly. And know that God is going to, this is a change day. God, this is a night of change. This is a night of change. Your glory is going to awaken. You're going to have creativity. God is going to give you open doors that no man can shut. This is a new night, people of God. The God of Gideon is your God. And he's not only with you, but he's in you in the name of Jesus. 
Are you ready to agree with me? I'm going to be praying for you right now. Rashe Karaba, Ramba Kashada. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come at this altar. We declare this an altar to Jesus Christ. And God, you are the one that come to this altar. You are the human sacrifice in this altar. Witchcraft power has all kind of sacrifice, but there's no sacrifice like the pure human sacrifice of Jesus. And so, Father, we remind you of the cross. We remind you, Father, of what they did to your son. The spirit that ravished him. The spirit that tortured him. And now that same spirit is after your children again. So, Father, I mediate in the name of Jesus. And I bind all forces of the mammon spirit, the Midianite spirit, the spirit of infirmity that comes to ravish, that comes to impoverish, that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we declare, oh God, that by your stripes we are healed. Now, God, work that word. Work that word. You watch over your word to perform it. Lord God, you are a provider. You are a provider. Jehovah Jireh, work it, oh God. My God shall provide. My God shall provide. According to your riches, miracles. We lose financial miracles at this altar tonight. In the name of Jesus. Reshe Karabakasada. Father, we pray for divine connections. We pray for divine connections in the name of Jesus. Reshe Karabakasada. Favor, favor, favor is coming. Favor, favor, favor is coming. The curse is reversed. The curse is reversed. Reshe Kariyada Baso. Yekariyada Basanda. Oh Lord, Ramashe, come on, people working. Favor has come. Favor has come. Favor has come. God says no more. God says no more. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I will bless you. I will help you. I will heal you. I will deliver you in the name of Jesus. No weapon, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Reshe Karaba. God will shut the mouth of the lion. He will shut the mouth of the liars. We send back every witchcraft power, every witchcraft power. Boomerang, boomerang. Go back, go back to where it came from. Come on, people, fight for your blessing. Fight for your blessing. Fight for your blessing. A new day. This is a new day. This is a new day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Sing it out. There is power in the name of Jesus. Wonder working power. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain. I hear the chains now, come on. Hey. I hear the chains falling. Sing it with me. Hey. I hear the chains falling. One more time now, hey. I hear the chains falling. Now stand now, hey. There's an army rising up. There's an army. There's an army rising up. Oh, that's you and me. There's an army rising 
the power to break every chain come on you alone have the power to break every chain you alone have the power to break every chain one more time now. you alone have the power to break every chain to break an army is raising up by the power of Jesus name and army is raising up by the power of Jesus name and army is rising up by the power of Jesus name and army is rising up by the power of Jesus name and army is rising up by the power of Jesus name to break every chain break every chain break every chain Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Come on, raise your hands and begin to thank God for tonight. 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 Go ahead and thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you to thank you. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for prospering us. Thank you for changing us. Thank you for transformation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tonight. Thank you. We will never be the same again. 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 Oh, never, 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 never. Never, 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 never be the same again. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you, we 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 thank you, Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for Sweden, thank you, thank you, thank you for UK, thank you, thank you, thank you for Germany, thank you for France, thank you for Belgium, thank you, Lord, thank you for Italy, thank you, thank you for Europe, thank you, thank you, oh, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you, 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 thank you for our churches, they are growing, they are expanding. Thank you, 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 Lord, thank you, thank you for every church. Thank you for every pastor here today. Every pastor here is blessed. Thank you, Lord, for our churches. Thank you for increase. Thank you for finances. Thank you, thank you for growth. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we celebrate you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
thank you Lord for growth thank you for business guys we thank you for every breakthrough hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Woo! glory to God glory to God come on clap your hands once again and praise God wonderful wonderful Tomorrow, we are here, we start 2 p.m. Everyone say 2 p.m. 14 hours, 2 p.m. we start. 2 p.m. Praise God. And tomorrow is the last day. And you know what's going to happen here. You know what's going to happen here. Wow. So let's be here tomorrow. Come early. Bring someone. Come with someone. How many of you are bringing somebody with you tomorrow? Make a phone call tonight. Make a phone call tonight. Prepare to bring them. Wave to me. Let me see you. Father, I pray and I bless them. When they make those phone calls, people will respond in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, share, share, share the, today's video on Facebook. You can go to uh, uh, um, CCI Stockholm uh, on a Facebook page and share today's video. Let's reach so many people with a message of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, share, share that video. Share that video. Let us reach so many people. Talk about IBC. Um, invite people let's come tomorrow we are closing tomorrow we are finishing tomorrow it is a great day tomorrow great day M my, my eyes have seen tomorrow already so I know what's going to happen tomorrow I know what's happening tomorrow and so I encourage you to be here prepare yourself to receive I know what is happening tomorrow praise God we love you very much can we stand up on our feet uh, we want to go home and uh, rest.